Hey guys, what's going on? Josh here from Polymathics, and today has just been a crazy day. It's been a crazy week. Um, we just got through with a big move, and um, oh, so today's topic is chaos and how to deal with it. Um, and this this is going to go in a bunch of different places, so just bear with me. But um, so a lot of stuff has been going on over here, a lot of unexpected events. Um, movers came, there's a lot of boxes here, still having to be open, the house is kind of a disaster. And to top that off, like a field mouse got in the house because the doors were all open, so dealing with that and probably got to get an exterminator. Um, and then like the light bulb in the uh, projector uh, apparently went out suddenly and those are not cheap any of you who didn't know those are cost a pretty penny and so anyways the point is I got a lot of things going on that are actually they're pretty funny and I'm actually gonna talk about why they're funny but um, it got me to thinking like, you know, how, how is it that successful people deal with their problems? Because I mean, the problems that I just said are ridiculous, which is why that's part of the reason why it's funny. Like when, whenever you face chaos like that and you face issues, one of the things you have to do is put it in perspective. You have to think about, you know, the starving children in Africa and kids who, you know, never met their parents or, you know, just things like that. Or you can also switch it around and think about like entrepreneurs who go bankrupt like Walt Disney did multiple times. Um, people who have lost their business or their jobs, right? There are far worse things that can happen in life. So one of the things that I try to do, and it seems like a lot of successful people do, when they're faced with problems and challenges like this, the chaos that life is undoubtedly going to bring to you, is that they try to put it in perspective. Um, they try to maintain a constant state of emotion. So instead of becoming really happy with, with good news and then really sad with bad news, they try to maintain a constant state. So I know a lot of people who, if even one of those things that happened to me had happened to them, they would have, it would have ruined their day, probably their week. They'd be stressing about it. Uh, a good example is, and this is the way I, I try to think about it. Whenever I get frustrated, I try to think about this kind of thing. If I'm over at a friend's house and their dog jumps on the table and eats all the food or poops on the carpet, I think that's hilarious. I, I mean, I feel bad for my friend, but it's freaking hilarious. And I would probably laugh and watch while it happened. <laughs> I'm that kind of friend. But, um, and I'm sure my friend, though, having to deal with that problem is going to be super frustrated and extremely mad and they'll probably stress out about it and they'll probably take their anger out on the dog even though they love the dog um and then you know as time goes on maybe two weeks two months two years we could be sitting back sitting at a bar throwing back beers and then I say hey remember that time your dog deuced all over the kitchen floor or whatever while we were doing blah 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 and we, we can laugh about it right time allows them to see things in perspective and realize how little of a problem that was and when I look back on my life and I think about a lot of the things that I stressed out about um, they're nowhere near they were not worth the stress that I gave and the amount of my life and effort that I gave to them and I'm sure you guys can relate for example, um, as you guys know, part of this channel, uh, one of the series that I do about face, 
is geared towards helping military members transition into the civilian sector. And that is a huge, um, that is a milestone in a military member's life. And it causes several people great deals of stress. But the thing that you have to do to put it in perspective is, one, remember that people with far less skills and abilities were able to survive A, through life, and B, um, this transition uh, just fine. So if they were able to do it, then you'll do just fine. But people, they stress. The other thing is to remember that there are people who go through much more difficult transitions. I think you guys get the point, though. Turning, turning your perspective and looking at it from like a different point of view, a third person's point of view, like my friend and his dog, when you do that, it allows you to kind of laugh at things and say, oh, okay, that's kind of silly, right? Why did I get so upset? Why, why is this even bothering me? There are bigger things in life. I'm meant to do bigger things, so why is this an issue? The other thing is you have to remember um, it's sort of like a test, right? For people, for people, for a person to go from one level to another level, they, have, they face multiple tests throughout their life. And what, what we see, so, or at least what I see so often, is people who you can see, they, like, they got stuck at this level. And the reason was because they could never overcome this particular type of challenge. So for some people, it's their relationships, right? Maybe they're stuck in a dead-end relationship, a bad marriage or something like that. But because they can never get past that, they're unable to go to the next level, uh, to reach their full potential. And so many people have that happen. And the reason is because they don't understand how to embrace chaos. They don't understand that change is a good thing. And as a matter of fact, change is the only thing that the world is guaranteed to give you every single day of your life. The one thing that you can guarantee that you can count on every day is that tomorrow will not be the same as yesterday. The next five minutes won't be the same as the last 30 something years of your life. It's always different. And the reason is this, and I'm going to do a little Buddhist thing on you, right? I want you to imagine that you have a telescope and you can look out into the night sky, right? First, you see the moon and it's spinning and moving around the earth. But then, <clears throat> you see that beyond that there are planets revolving around the sun including the earth right and they're all in constant motion and then you see that the sun as giant and huge as it is is just a tiny little speck in comparison to the rest of the galaxy and that galaxy is revolving and is just a tiny little speck within the spectrum of the universe in the multiple galaxies that exist. And so not only does it give you some perspective on how tiny you are, but also you see that even the greatest things that we understand, that we can comprehend, are in constant motion. Every day of their lives, of their existence, they're constantly changing. Now, let's take it back a different way. Let's pretend that we have a microscope and we look at the tissues in our skin, on our hand. And first, we'll see like, you know, little, uh, you know, cells moving back and forth and multiplying and, and doing, you know, blood platelets, you know, making sure that you're not sick and all this other stuff. And then you go a little further and you go down to like molecules and you see how their, you know, their reactions to each other are causing changes and in, in interactions. And then if you go even further down to like the atom level, the atomic level, then you see like the nucleon, uh, the, the nucleus, and you see the nucleon and the electron and the proton all moving in and out of existence, going so far out in like this uh, uh, like frequency or wave almost, right? If, if, if you guys are familiar with string theory, like it talks a lot about that. But the point 
The point is that everything from the greatest things that we can possibly understand down to the smallest things that we are that we have found are all constantly in motion. That is the one thing about life. And although there is order to all of this, there is also chaos. There are two sides of the same coin. And so far too many of us want order in our lives. And whenever these changes come, we try to fight them off as if we have some power or ability to control all the maelstroms that are constantly going to overtake us, you know, day after day after day. And so um, what ends up happening is we waste all this time and energy and stress. And then we look back on our lives and we realize like all the emotion and energy that was spent could have been spent doing something more something more, something more powerful, something more useful, something more pro, uh, effective, right? But because we got caught up. Now the question is, how, why do we get caught up? What do we get caught up on? Well, um, in one of my favorite books uh, that some of you guys have probably read, it's called The 50th Law. It's by the best-selling author Robert Greene. He did a collaboration with 50 Cent after his first best-selling book, The 48 Laws of Power. And in the sequel, they talk about the 50th law, which is fearlessness. And in chapter 4, I believe, they talk about one of the principles of fearlessness is flow and, um, and build momentum, right? And they explain it very similar to the way Bruce Lee explains Jeet Kwon Do. They explain it like water. You have to be fluid. You have to embrace chaos. You have to, um, you know, slip past the obstacles that are in your way. And in one of the sections, what Robert Greene explains is that when we were children, because we couldn't communicate well, um, we did all of these things and formed a lot of habits and beliefs in order to make sense of the world because when you're a baby in particular nothing makes sense and so you had to create rules in your mind and references in order for things to make sense but the problem is as we get older those rules and references become lines and then boxes in which we compartmentalize all the different places of our life our relationships our beliefs our businesses, our children, and before you know it, we've created, we've boxed ourselves in, and whenever some new thing comes, we're, we're static. We're not dynamic anymore. And so instead of being able to slip past things and move and go with the flow, like everything else in the universe, what happens is we clash against it. We clash and we clash. And and a lot of people, you know, that, that's where they stop. That's at the level that they can no longer progress. But those people who are successful are those who understand that chaos isn't a bad thing. It's a part of life. And as a matter of fact, if you prepare yourself for chaos, then what happens is a moment will come where everyone will see something as bad but you know that it's actually an opportunity in disguise and you're able to kind of like um, in um, in judo you're able to take the momentum of the attack and use it to your advantage to push use that energy to push the attack into the way that you want it to go and so um, so let me give you, if I can, an example of this. So one example I can think of is, you know, like Walt Disney multiple times was, uh, or, or I think he was bankrupt, I think like three times. Now, for a lot of people, that not only would cause huge chaos, but that would just, that would end them. They would not recover 
throughout history, particularly recent history, and particularly in Asian, uh, in, in like, um, you know, the, the Far East, a lot of CEOs who have failed companies end up committing suicide because of the cultural um, stigmas that go along with that, with, with being a failure. Disney didn't see things as, as a failure. He, he saw those bankruptcies, A, as learning experiences, and B, he was able to, to eventually transfer all that energy and those experiences into lessons that gave him the ability to finally get the loan that he needed to create um, Disney World. I think it was after 300 plus attempts. The other thing to keep in mind, and this is along the lines of a polymathic mindset, is that um, like I read when I was I was recently in a college course and I read an uh, interesting statistic by I believe it was like the New York it wasn't the New York Times but it was like the New York Daily News and in it it said that from 2008 until July of last year over 7 million 7 million jobs were lost to technology and a lot of people would consider that a ter and, and in a sense it is a bad thing but it, the thing is it's just it's that same chaos that the world is constantly bringing right jobs don't have futures people have futures and i don't know whose quote that is but um something nightingale i believe i forget but he said jobs don't have futures people have futures and so the people who have futures are the ones who understand that it's not the job that they're tied to. It's, it's, it's they're the ones with the worth. And so when we get these statistics uh, or demographics that say, like, you know, X amount of people are going to lose their jobs because technology is taking over. Well, one, those statistics are going to continue throughout the rest of your lives. So... You can either fight against them or you can embrace them and see the opportunity. And the opportunities are boundless. And that's where the polymathic mindset comes in. If you look at problems from with a multifaceted approach, then you can see where, where there are areas of growth, where there are areas of connection, and where there are areas of opportunities that others see as a negative but could be taken advantage of Stri simply because they put themselves in this box where they think that there are only two directions in the world forward or backward they don't realize that there's it's omnidirectional you can go any direction you want just like water you can fl flow and slip past anything if you're able to move with the current. Now, another thing that uh, Robert Greene brings up in his book is that this flow is, you, it's not that you just get caught in the undertow and, and get sucked in and drowned with all this chaos. The thing is that you prepare for it, and when it comes, you redirect it. Like I said, sort of like in judo, you redirect the energy in to where to where you want it to go and like a river with several different channels what happens is you start to create a flow and that flow builds momentum in the direction that you want things to go and this is how many successful people um are able to um take seemingly difficult bad situations and turn them into um you know beneficial things for example i mean if we were to take a look at hollywood actors as an example and i'm not saying that they're the best but they're just a uh, an easy example there are so many like miley cyrus or the um the kardashians the uh oh who are those guys the duck dynasty guys um 
the the ladies from or the family from um, Honey Boo Boo. Um, there are so many celebrities that Britney Spears is another one that take bad publicity and are able to turn it around into a, a way that makes makes them more money. The Kardashians are actually um, masters at this. But uh, it's all on how you look at things. Presidents are the same way. Like the thing is, uh, it, it's it's turning the the phrase is like you know turning lemons into lemonade or shit into sugar. It's it's being able to redirect that bad energy and turn it into something good, because you're not fighting against the flow of the energy. You're saying yes, okay, I accept it but I'm going to put it over here, right? Whereas a lot of people are like, no! And what happens is it pushes them back until it floods them over, right? And and drowns them out. And so, um, anyways, I a lot of this stuff has been going on recently with me, and it just got me to thinking, you know, like, why is it that I don't... Why, why am I not affected by these things as much? And um, the, other, the other part of that is having dreams and goals that you're, tr that you're actively pursuing that are so important to you and you're so emotionally connected to that these little things, they're, they're like little, you know, you're a giant and they're just little rocks, just pebbles, just pinging off your armor because they're not a big deal. Because you have a bigger goal and purpose in your life. But uh, anyways, I've been rambling on and, um, and I'll leave you with this. So ask yourself, you know. What kind of chaos, because I'm sure everyone has been experiencing some manner, shape, form of chaos in their lives, at least in the last week, if not the last day or hour. What is it that's bothering you? Can you put it in perspective? Can you, can you look at it and, and see how tiny it is in the scheme of things? Is there any way that you can redirect that energy and possibly turn lemons into lemonade? Hopefully, now that you understand, and I'm not saying you didn't before, some of you may have, but now, now that I've explained something that would probably, in the back of your mind, you had a general understanding of, now that it's been kind of put out there, and now that you know you can identify those things, what are those things that are bothering you? Is there a way to make them into something that's laughable? And instead of it being two weeks, two years, or two months, or two weeks, two months, or two years down the road? Could it be two minutes from now? Could you laugh about it and just let it slide off of you like water? That way you save yourself energy to do the things that are more important in your life? I think you can. Anyways, uh, I got to go because this is going way too long. Until next time, take it easy. Click, click, click.